This gray bird is surrounded with a riot of color, layers and layers of texture. I'm gonna take you behind the scenes and share my thought process as I create this bird and the background step by step. There's lots of discussion about color, in particular, how to choose shades of gray and how using black, white, and gray can enhance your stitching. Also, towards the end, I demonstrate how I create the blanket stitch so that it becomes an easy and smooth motion. So sit back and stitch along with me today as I create this piece. I'm so happy you're here. Let's get started. I use both embroidery needles and milliner's needles. I like both types of needles. Today I'm going to be using two strands of floss throughout the piece. I'm starting with these really bright colors. I've placed little pieces on top of this orange square that's about four by four inches. After basting them down with thread, I've used a crew, which is an off-white color, and I've created slow stitching lines in different directions. This is my first layer of stitch and it has secured all of my small pieces. I'm using a piece of felt as my backing, so that is also now secured to my fabrics. Now I'm bringing out a bird template. This is part of a new set that I've just made that has four different birds, a fish, and a butterfly. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in picking up this set. It's also available as a PDF download. So I've chosen this little fat bird and I think this is going to fit nicely on here. But I could also use a butterfly and I even like the way that this hen looks. So you can't really go wrong. I'm going to stick with this fat bird today and I'm thinking about a fabric that I want for the bird. And I have a piece of dyed fabric that's not quite black. It's actually got gray and green and some purple shades. And the overall effect is this nice dark blackish gray. So I think this is gonna add a bit of interest to the bird instead of just a flat black. I'm just gonna need a little corner of this piece. And the colors of this fabric are making me think about a junco, which is a bird that's really common where I live. There are a couple of different varieties of junco, but the female ones tend to have these beautiful shades of gray. So that's the bird that's inspiring my stitching today. The method I'm gonna to use to cut out my bird is a freezer paper technique. So where I live, you can pick up freezer paper at the grocery store. And here's the kind that I have. It's a fairly long roll. So I have a small piece. One side is shiny and the other side is flat. The shiny side is what's going to be ironed onto the fabric, and the flat side is the side I'm gonna draw my bird on. So I just need to trace this bird with a pen. You could also use a pencil. After tracing the bird shape onto the freezer paper, I iron it onto my fabric and I cut it out. After it's cut out, I peel the paper away from the fabric and I'm gonna place it on my piece. I like the way that that looks, and I still have quite a bit of this fabric left to use for another project. I'm gonna get some black floss. You could use one or two strands. I'm gonna use one here, and I'm gonna stitch all the way around the bird. Because I've used the freezer paper, I have some really nice clean edges. So it makes it really easy to stitch around with this one strand. I'm getting fairly close to the edges, and I'm moving all the way around. You could use a back stitch for this. You could use a running stitch. I'm leaving spaces in between my stitches. And then I work my way down to the legs. The fabric's fairly thin here, so I just take care to go right in the center of everything and attach those legs and feet. Now that my bird is attached, I'm gonna add more collage to my piece and I'm bringing in a new color got this bright blue-green color. I have some really small pieces. I'm going to place them around and to stitch them on I'm going to try to blend them in a bit by choosing a floss color that's got lots of yellow and lots of green in it. 
So I'm looking at those pieces that are behind the bird, that green and that bright, bright yellow. And I'm going to use this color to stitch on these bright blue pieces. I'm switching back to two strands now, and I'll be using two strands throughout the rest of this piece. So here my blue pieces are stitched on. I've done a really freeform technique where I've attached them. It's nice to see the stitches starting to go in a different direction. It's just added a little more color and texture. I've decided to bring out some more of that gray black fabric and add it to the sides. So I've taken a piece and I'm folding it in half and I'm enclosing it on the edges. Now I'm bringing out a light blue green color. That's a nice complement to the colors in the piece. And I'm doing some stitching in this black gray area. And this is to start to blend it in with the rest of the piece. Now I'm bringing out a light blue, lighter than the other blue shade that I had already added. And I'm gonna add some pieces of this light blue. I'm gonna use that same light blue floss that I'd begun with to stitch these pieces on. I'm continuing to just use straight stitches. I'm going around the edges of this fabric and the color is a fairly close match, so it's not going to show up a lot. And this is just a continual process of playing, having an idea, adding a new color in both fabric and floss in this really additive process of adding more and more color and texture. I'm going to add black to the other side of the piece as well and incorporate some of that light blue. So here's the black on the other side. I'm going to continue adding this light blue color and this is just playing, cutting small snippets and moving it all around the piece. So now I have multiple pieces of this light blue. It's really adding a lot of energy and interest in the piece. And now that I have this color and energy really moving all around this bird, I'm going to bring in some new floss colors. So I have a pink that's a close match to the dark pink that's in the background. So I'm also going to grab a shade of pink that's just slightly lighter. And that's going to show up more and add some contrast and some depth. And at this point, I've decided that this piece is going to be all about layering that all these colors in the background are going to be enhanced with layers and layers of colorful stitching. So I'm starting on the top with these pink shades. I'm moving it outside of the areas where the color's matching and I'm blending it in with the orange. And I'm gonna keep stitching in this top area in these pink shades, both the lighter and the darker pink. I've moved down a bit and I've done a band of the two shades of pink just above the bird's head. And now I'm gonna bring in another color. I've picked a yellow that is darker than the light yellow. It's kind of acting like a bridge between the yellow and the orange. And I'm gonna start stitching over top of that yellow area, moving straight across with straight stitches again. So I've begun doing that and I'm liking the texture that it's adding. So I'm going to keep going, adding more of this yellow all the way across. So now the stitching is getting even thicker. There's layer upon layer in these shades of pink and this yellow, and you can see that the ecru color that I initially stitched in the background is also showing up more. So that has given me the idea to bring out a white color and to add that into the background as well. Now I'm looking at the edges and I've decided to bring in a darker color on the edges. So I'm starting with a black here and I'm going to do a blanket stitch all around the edges. So I've done some blanket stitching and it's really showing up at the top and the bottom where the orange fabric is. It's not showing up as much on the edges. It's really tying the piece together and I'm gonna continue layering now with color. So I've brought in that light blue green color that I'd used to stitch down some of the blue patches. It's actually a really pale turquoise color. And in that middle section, I'm gonna do the same thing I did in the top using just straight stitches 
and creating a band of color all the way across the piece. So this is a really relaxing process where I am not focused on getting perfect stitches or aligning them in a particular way. I know I'm going straight up and down, but I let them angle a bit to the left or the right so they're very imperfect. And I work my way across and I turn and I go back. So this becomes a really relaxing process where I can just let the stitches happen and create this really nice texture. So I've taken this pale turquoise color all across in that back area, all the way down almost to the feet of the bird. I've also switched to the yellow that I used in the upper area and I've done a line of that right near the bird's feet. So now this piece is really getting full of texture with all this heavy, heavy stitching. At this point, I'm gonna switch my attention to the bird and I wanna choose some gray shades for the bird. So one way that I use to stitch gray is to pull out a gray that I feel is going to go with all the colors that I'm using. So in this case, I've pulled out this sort of blue gray color. If I bring out my floss collection here, here are the selection of grays that I have. So some of them are tending towards blue colors and some of them are tending towards brown. And I've chosen the ones today that tend towards the blue because I'm using so much blue in this piece. I'm gonna pull out one that has more brown in it and show the difference here when you see them side by side. It wouldn't be wrong to choose this. It actually might be nice to add some brown shades into this piece. I just wanna be consistent in what I'm choosing. So I wouldn't choose to have these two colors together. If I wanted to bring out the brownish gray tones, then I would choose all grays that have the brownish gray. So because I'm choosing these blue grays, I'm looking at what other colors I have and I wanna choose a darker shade. So I've pulled out this blue gray that's slightly darker than the one that I've started with. I also have another blue gray that's a fairly close match, just slightly darker than the one I have. And again, if I was going to be using the brown shades, I would choose a darker and a lighter shade but I wouldn't put the brown gray with the blue gray. The other thing I'm doing is bringing out that blue color, that turquoisey blue that I've already used stitching in the background. I'm holding it up against the gray to see if I feel like it matches. And I feel like they go really well together. So that tells me that this shade of gray is a really good choice. Another way to be doubly sure is to select out the number of strands you're going to be using. So here I'm pulling out two strands of this gray that I've chosen and I'm holding it up against the bird and the background of the piece to make sure that I feel like that color is really matching. And when I see that color up against the bird and the background, I feel like it's a really good match. So it's confirmed again that I wanna use this gray. So I'm gonna begin stitching on the bird with this lighter color and I'm going to stitch the belly of the bird, again being inspired by the female Junko. So I stitch a few rows in this lighter color and I'm liking the effect of that. And now I'm going to choose a third color to use on the wing. Because I've chosen to use a blue-gray, I've looked to some of my blues to find a match. And I'm really liking this sort of antique blue color. Here's more of a navy blue color, and I feel like it's contrasting too much. It's also quite a bit darker. So instead, I'm gonna choose this antique blue that's gonna show up more, and it's really gonna blend with the gray that's already there. So I'm going to use this blue color that I've chosen to do some stitching on the wing. Now that I've added this color, I wanna take a look and evaluate how it's reading. It's coming across quite a bit darker than the belly, which is good, and it's bringing out some blue tones in the gray, which is nice, and it's tying into some of that darker color that I have around the edges. And now I want to add some more dimension to the wing. 
So I'm going to bring out a color that feels like it's halfway in between the two colors that I've already used. So here's a color that I've chosen. You can see that it is very close to the light gray color, just a little bit darker, but it also matches with the blue quite well. So my plan is to add that mid color onto the wing and stitch that onto the head. And I'm also liking the light gray color for the beak, which is very much like a Junko. So I've begun stitching in the top area of the wing and I'm really liking the way that it's adding dimension and depth to the wing area. You can see the difference here in the area that's had the stitching in the area that just has the blue. It's really blending the whole bird together as one. So I'm gonna continue this stitching down to the tip of the wing and the tail. So here it is stitched and I'm really liking the way that it looks. I still have that bottom area to stitch, but at this point I know I'm gonna to wanna to bring some of the bird colors into the rest of the piece. So here's the blue that I had stitched in the mid area, and I've chosen a color that has a bit more green and is slightly darker than that color to begin doing some stitches in the lower area. And that's gonna add some contrast and dimension as well. After stitching that darker color in the bottom, I also decided to start bringing in some of those gray colors underneath the bird. And I like what that's adding. So another way to add interest and dimension to the piece is to use dark and light colors. So in this case, I have black and gray and white that I can integrate into the background of the piece. And I think that in this case, I wanna add white in the upper area and gray and black in the lower area. Because I've chosen colors that aren't quite black for this piece, I'm going to actually use a very dark gray instead of a black. So this dark gray that I've chosen is darker than the bird, so it's gonna add some nice dimension to the background. So here I've brought it in underneath the bird and it's adding a nice contrast between the upper and the lower area. And I wanna bring it up even higher. So here you can see it's coming up right underneath the bird and starting to go behind the bird. And then I'm going to bring in the white and I'm gonna add that in the upper half while I bring the gray a little bit higher in the lower half. I brought back in that mid-tone gray as a bridge between that darker gray and the white. And I'm gonna use that to stitch right where the white and the gray meet. This is gonna be a subtle difference. So here I have brought that gray all the way up, almost to the top of the bird, more to the bird's shoulder, and it's meeting the area where I've stitched the extra white. So I'm fairly happy with the background at this point and I'm gonna switch my attention back to the edges and do more blanket stitching. I'm going to use this dark gray color and I'm gonna bring the blanket stitching a little in from the edges. So I'm going to take my stitches below the blanket stitching that already exists. So you're going to see some little lines that are gonna be below what's there and that's gonna add a little bit more interest. It's going to make the border wider. So I'm spacing these stitches out and I'm going right over top of the blanket stitching that's already there. And you can see that I am holding the thread in my left hand. I'm holding it away from where I'm stitching so that when I come up, I'm forming a loop. That's a really easy way that I've found to create blanket stitching. It's a very smooth motion. So I've started here up in this corner and I'm gonna continue and work my way all the way around. So here's that extra layer of blanket stitching. It's brought that color in a little bit closer. So I'm feeling right now like this piece is almost finished. And I'm looking at it and evaluating and trying to decide if there's anything more that I need to add to make it complete. One of the ways that I use to decide when I'm finished stitching is to walk away and leave it for a while and come back to the piece with fresh eyes. And sometimes you can see an area where you wanna add 
one or two more things. So I've done that here and I can see there's one more thing that I want to add and that is a little bit of white stitching around the bird. I've added this line of white to highlight the bird to make that bird stand out just a little bit more, almost like she's glowing. And now I feel like I'm done. My little Junko inspired bird is standing amidst all of this wild texture and color. And she's a lovely contrast to everything that's happening in the background. Creating this stitched piece has been so enjoyable. I didn't know where I was going when I started and I just took it one step at a time. I ended up adding so many layers of stitch, so many layers of color. And that's just what this piece called for in the end. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this inspires you to take your own stitching in the direction that you want it to go. Until next time, happy stitching. <laughs>